have the ovals that look like this. Yeah. This is when we'll put some, like, uh, one, two, three. This is when we use mapping. Right. Mapping. I'm just making it up. Like, look at number three. That's the way it'll look. Um, or as a chart. So tell me how we know what domain is or what is domain. It's the X. Or in the case of a mapping, it's the one on the left, right? So domain, we're talking about X. Remember, though, we do domain in interval notation. Y'all remember how to do that? Yeah. Brackets and parentheses. Right, right. If it includes, so if it's something like, what's the domain? No, Oh, oh, my God. oh, no. Oh, if it includes the point, it's a bracket. And most of the time when we're talking about um, functions like this and graphs, it's going to be a bracket. The only time it's not, if I had something like... Let's say there's an asymptote at one. What's your domain there? What's your range? One parentheses infinity because it goes up forever. Because it doesn't touch an as even though my it's touching my asymptote, it really doesn't. It's an asymptote. Yeah. Um. Don't do set, this says set notation, but don't. Oh, there's examples on here. Look at number four. What's the domain? Negative infinity to infinity. And then range is. Well, what is it? Six. Is it a bracket or a parenthesis? Why? That point is a six. Bottoms up for range. Lowest up to the highest. Bottoms up. Prohibition, baby. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. All right, so lowest, right? It goes down forever. And then as I go up, where does it stop? And we're looking at Y oh, values. Okay, so range is up. Yes, left to right. Because those bottoms are slowly creeping out. How about five? What's the domain? It looks like that point is negative three, negative four. So something close to that. But domain we said would be negative three. How about the range? Is it all coming back now? It's all coming back. It's all coming back. How about number six? Yes, this is where I have to join two different ones. What is that, four? One, two, three, four. Looks like there's an asymptote here. Looks like there's an asymptote here. We're going to talk about rational functions soon and graphing them. So what's the domain? Negative infinity. Yep, so four. It's a parenthesis because it's an asymptote. Remember what? Anybody remember? It's a U. Close, you knew it was a letter, so that counts. Remember, whenever we want to leave out just one number, we do back-to-back -back parentheses with a U in between. That'll leave out just one value. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I understand it, but I don't 
But you don't, okay. So that, that says go all the way up to four, but don't include four, and then pick back up on the other side of four and keep going forever. How about the range? Exactly. Yep, that's the asymptote from the bottom up. Here's your asymptote. So it goes down forever, and then I go up until I hit that asymptote, and I've got hit a roadblock, so I stop. So I have to leave that out, and then I go up forever. I'm glad we reviewed this a bit. I started at three. Those are just X and Y. How about seven? Good job. So I've got this funky wave. And we said domain negative infinity to infinity. What about the range? It absolutely is. Bracket or parenthesis, though? Bracket. Because it actually has a point there. there. Who tried number eight? I don't know what that is. It's a hole. Oh, that means. Eight? eight is leaving out just that one point, and that's it. Final answer? Ryan, tell us your final answer for that one. For your domain. Uh, no? That's exactly right. How about the range? Okay, so domain is left to right. So yeah, but like all the x's that it can possibly be. So in this case, it can be any x. Go ahead, ask your question. Okay, so this open dot tells me to exclude that one value. Asymptotes tell you to exclude that value. Other than that, as long as it's a continuous graph right there, you include everything. Does that make more sense? You will, you can kind of see when there's an asymptote on there, like, like number 10. And 11 has one as well. <clears throat> it gets really close, right. And you never see it cross over, but it gets really close. How about the range? So this point is negative one, negative three. So that leaves that out of the x and that out of the y. Bruh. Right. We'll probably take, you can go to the back one. All right, try number nine. Parker has one of those. Every morning he gets up or he gets ready for school. Wraps in that thing on high. Okay.
Yes or no? Yeah. Left to right, same way you read. So it goes left forever, that's negative infinity, and then as I truck back to the right, I stop at zero. You good? <laughs> so since this is going down. And the, ah, Brian. And this one's going up. It goes. There's no breaks in the. It, it goes down forever and up forever, and there's no holes in between. So just negative infinity to infinity. How about ten? Ten is actually. One, two, three, four, five. She'll be coming now. No. How about domain? Good job. How about range? Bracket parenthesis. It's always a printing. Yep, because by definition, it can't cross the asymptote. Right. Try eleven on your own. Try eleven. Domain, what is it? Uh -uh, I'm sorry. I appreciate How about the range? Yeah, it might just be hard to see where that asymptote is on that graph, but yes, yeah, negative one. All right, 12 on your own. Mark, set, go. Ooh. What? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. How do you know you got it right? It is busting, busting. Have you seen that guy on TikTok? No, but there's a guy who makes all these recipes and he's like, today I'm going to make Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. And he throws the stuff at the yeah. camera and then he finishes and he goes, it is busting, busting. But a lot of times he has to put like a little emoji over his mouth because he talks with his mouth. Okay, Lainey knows what he's talking about. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, All right, check yours, 10 minute range. Why didn't I leave this out of my range? 
Why didn't I leave it out of my range, though? At two, at negative three, it's still a graph here. There's still some graph that goes with it. So yeah. Oh, I did not. Sorry. All right. Wait. Wait. And a parenthesis if it's not included. Yes, if it doesn't touch on like yes, yes. All right, let's move on down to functions. What is a function? You don't understand function? Domain range? Left to right, bottoms up. Okay, I'll help you with it whenever we finish this. Exactly one. You're you're right though. Keep going. A function is a special type of relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So right, you can't. Every x has to have only one y that goes with it. In other words, remember the vertical line test we did? If it ever intersects the graph more than once, it fails because if I had something like this. This, let's say this y was 1, I mean that x was 1. There are two different, oops, I should put that down a little bit more. Okay, we'll call it. I have the point 1, 1, and I have the point 1, negative 2, both on the same graph. This 1x has two different y's that go with it, so it's not a function. We also use the vertical line test. We said if you could ever drop a vertical line anywhere and it hits more than one time, it's not a function. Do y'all remember doing this? Okay. So <clears throat> look at number 16 there. Is that a function or no? Yeah. Yes. How about 17? Uh, 18. Yeah. Yes. So everybody see what we're doing? Those are pretty easy. I'm... I don't know if it does. That'd be nice. Explicit versus implicit <laughs> equations. Explicit is written in terms of just one variable. It means you have y equals some, some, some x, some, some, some x. There's only one variable in there. Explicit is when you have multiple variables in there, okay? So most of the time, we write it explicitly in terms of another variable. So if you look like at number one, number one is implicit because the x and the y are together. If you solve it for one variable and put everything on the same side, then it would be explicit. Does that make sense? So... Implicit because the multiple variables. But if I then solve it for one of the variables, it says actually to um, write each equation explicitly in terms of x. That means I want all the x's together on one side. So I would have negative 4y equals 20 minus x, and I would divide everybody by negative 4. As explicit can have multiple variables together. Yes, yes. This is written explicitly in terms of x, whereas the first one was not. One variable. Yes. Right. Well, but then it would be written explicitly in terms of y and not in terms of x. For one variable, essentially, is what you're doing. So yes. Right. I'm not as worried about this until we get to calculus with implicit differentiation and everything else. So right now, I'm not as worried about this. Um, what I am worried about is the function notation. If you skip down. It's okay. If you don't understand implicit and explicit, it is okay. Oh. Oh. That's your equation? Function notation? Looks like that. That's function notation. 
You just don't know what it's called, but you know how to do it. What's in parentheses tells us what to plug in for the X. Okay, and so we start out with some, remember this is just a review, so if you need me to slow down or anything, tell me. I'm just kind of brushing over the top. Um, look at number seven. Number seven tells us that f of x is x squared minus 6x plus 23. And then it says, what's f of negative 5? You just plug in negative 5, right? In fact, whatever is in parentheses is what we're plugging in. And we could plug anything in there. We could plug in x plus 2. Oh, in fact, if you turn it over, we start plugging in some, some different stuff. Um, if you did not get the right thing, Twenty-five plus thirty plus twenty-three. Fifty-five seventy-eight. I mean, you didn't do that. If y'all need me to do more than what I'm doing, tell me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna skip. Remember, these are just kind of notes, and if you need more practice, you don't have to turn this part in. This is just us going through together. Eleven and twelve. Um, eleven says q of x equals the square root of six minus two x, and it asks us to find q of negative fifteen. So plug negative fifteen in for the x. Slow down. Sorry. That means make it positive. I actually remember how to do this. This is one thing I remember too well. I can tell you why. I put five and I put two. Say again. Look at the difference in 14. As we jump over to 14, 14 is asking us for a third root. What does that mean? What times what times what? Times itself three times. So I have a of x equals negative cubed root of 2x minus 7 plus 1. The plus 1 sits outside of that radical, so be very careful. And they asked me to find a of 17. So... Thirty-four. What's thirty-four minus seven? Twenty-seven. So what times itself three times gives you twenty-seven? By the way, could I have a negative number under a third root? Yes, you can because it's an odd. Odds you can have negatives under. Evens you can't. What happens if you have a negative under an even? Imaginary. Imaginary. Good job. And you write I. That's exactly right. You write I. This is negative 3 plus 1, which gives me dun, 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 negative 2. Everybody okay? Square root. Square roots get plus or minus because they can be positive or negative. Odds keep the sign. Hit math. And I don't remember which one it is. I think it's five or something. Not third roots. Third roots have one answer. Odd roots have one answer. Even roots have two. Math. Four. <laughs> Math. Math is how you do it, Aaron. Yeah. Four. Yeah. If you have a root other than three, like if this was the fifth root, or let's say the seventh root, seventh root of the, 
you could hit seven and then you do math and then you choose option five. Yeah. And that gives you the seventh root of. Yeah. What did y'all say, 15? F of x equals x to the third plus x squared. And it says, what is f of 3y squared? You try this one. Not what? You okay? So whenever I do this, I'm gonna plug the three y squared in for the x, right? But it's still got the cube here. So no, you can't combine them. No. But here, I can distribute this, and I can distribute because I'm multiplying in the parentheses. If you're adding, it would be a FOIL situation. But since I'm not, I have 3 to the third, which is 27. Y to the, do I add or do I multiply? Multiply. So Y to the sixth plus 9 Y to the fourth. So I think, Christina, this is what you were asking. Because they're not like terms, I can't combine them. If you have to, if it asks you to factor, but it didn't, so I'd just stop here. You're done, yeah. This is just evaluate. It just is evaluate. So, yeah, just tell what it equals. Let's do one more, one more, one more. 16? I was going to do 17. You think 16? Y'all try this one, and we'll do it together. I heard it's not that bad either. You know, I think we just, we just talked about commas and fanboys. Oh, God. Some of us have been so much real bad on that but summer. Like, but, oh, God. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, like, what's a fanboy? Like, oh, like, 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 Only if I start canceling stuff out here. They talk about picking up the Yeah, you can't. Oh, but you can. Oh, I didn't mean that. I don't know, actually. I had five roots here. I gave you. Well, that's what I did. Oh, you took five out. They said picking up seeds. That's what I was doing. They didn't say factor. Oh, yeah. They didn't say factor. They didn't. It just said evaluate. So if it didn't say simplify, I'll... I never know what factor is. Why can't I just do like... If it says simplify, go as far as you can go. So if I'm here, there's really... I mean, there, factoring wouldn't do me any good at this point, right? But here, factoring could allow me to simplify it some. No, not unless you divide everything by five. Then you would be killing a kitten. 
So if you divide every single thing by 5, I would go, okay, that would be negative 3c minus 2 over negative c plus 1. And that's the same thing I got. Just factor to negative 1 out. As long as you divide everything by 5. You couldn't just come here and go, I'm just going to divide those two by 5. You'd have to do everything. Well, because it was top and bottom, because it's everything. As long as you do it to every single piece, it's okay. Can you At the bottom right. That's correct. Y'all try 17. If y'all do 17, get right, we'll stop. I'm going to work it too while you work it, and then don't look up until you're done. That? I love this stuff. I'm not playing. I'm on your hair, though. Yeah. Oh, Yeah, I Oh, I, I distributed. Bro, ain't no way it, it takes all this. Yeah, okay, wait. Why Because it's plus in the middle. So when it's plus in the middle, this is really 2a plus 7. 2a plus 7 you have to pour. Yes. It's 49 minus 8. Oh, did I get 20? Oh, it's 41, yeah. Sorry. And that's the final answer. 2a is 14. Right? Here, that's no, it's because all the credit recovery and initial credit, all the SOAR classes and stuff are listed under my name. And I keep telling them every time they call, no. Or plus. You have to foil whether it's plus or minus. If it's multiply, you can distribute them. Oh, no. Okay. All right, last set. I know y'all are getting restless. Yes. Yeah, the back sheet. Um, you don't have to worry about one through three. I mean, if you do it, it's okay. You don't have to do 10 through 13 either. So 4 through 9 and 14 through 21. No. <laughs> Um, if you look at that graph, though, really quick, just to make sure you understand what that means, if you're given a graph and then you're asked to find a value, so if it said like f of 1, what does that mean? But what is it, what it is at 1? That's the y value at 1, right? So you go to where is x 1, and on this graph, it looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 9. 